Hi, this is Justin from Sonic Scoop, and today we're going to take a close look at some of the most useful microphones that money can buy. Today we're here at DeGraw Sound, and thanks to B&H, we've got a really cool lineup of some large diaphragm condenser microphones that are true studio workhorses. Maybe one of these can become a staple of your studio. We've got a really cool musician who's going to be helping us test these out today. His name is Wes Hutchinson, and he'll be singing and playing guitar so we can get a real feel for what these things sound like. Well, let's get started. Our first microphone in this lineup is the AKG C414 XL2. This is the latest in a long line of AKG 414 mics. There's a related model, it's called the XLS. That one is a slightly darker sound, or should I say this one is a slightly brighter sound. It's kind of engineered, designed to be a slightly brighter microphone. One that's really useful for lead instruments, lead vocal, acoustic guitar. I also really like it on drum overheads for when you want a really clean sound with a little bit of extra sparkle. This microphone is designed to be kind of really even and flat down the middle with some extended top end, a little bit of boost in the highs. That kind of adds clarity and shimmer to sounds. It's also really flexible. You've got these multi-position switches on the front allowing you to adjust between polar patterns. And here on the back, there's both a pad and a low frequency roll off. And there's not just one setting on this. You can toggle through your pads anywhere from down 6 dB to down 18 dB. And you can also toggle through your low frequency roll off settings anywhere from uh, cutting down at 40 hertz to cutting down at 160 hertz. Really flexible microphone and really attractive price point, especially compared to the rest of this line. It's not that much more than a thousand bucks. And this is something you could plausibly use on just about every session. The next mic in this series is another true studio staple, a real workhorse. This is the Neumann U87. It's one of those mics that's designed to be put in front of just about anything and sound good. Most commonly, uh, you'll see it used on vocals, but some folks do like them on acoustic guitars, drum overheads, electric guitar cabs, toms. I've seen them on almost anything. Uh, it is a bit more expensive than the 414, and it has a very different sound. I'd say compared to the 414, the mid-range is pushed forward a bit more. Maybe there's a little bit more girth to the sound as well, and uh, it has a, a really specific character that once you start to know what a Neumann U87 uh, sounds like, you start to hear that kind of Neumann-y tone uh, come back again and again. A bit mid-forward, but still very present. Really nice, classic mic. You also have polar pattern adjustment on this one, allowing you to uh, switch through polar patterns. And you also have the pads and the low frequency roll off in the back. Instead of having the multiple uh, roll off switches and the multiple pad settings that you have on the 414, uh, there's just one setting. But still, really classic, iconic design, and it'll work on just about anything you put in front of. The next mic down this line is a less expensive one from Neumann. It's still a little bit more expensive than the AKG 414, but it's about half the price of the Neumann U87. This one is called the TLM 107. Like the 414, it has digital control. And I'd say it doesn't sound too much like the U87. Instead of that mid forward push, you get a bit more of an open sound, almost, I don't want to say a scooped mid range, but a less forward uh, mid range. Really nice, pretty, open sounding microphone. And this one, uh, we really like the sound of when we were hearing it in here. There's a digital control in the back that allows you access to change your polar patterns, your pads, and low frequency roll off. Uh, really nice, modern design. The next one over here, this is the Soyuz SU017. And this microphone is, in a way, the simplest design here. There's not a button or a switch on the entire thing but it is machined in a painstaking way. They make these capsules themselves in a factory in Russia, and uh, then they're assembled into this beautiful body that really feels like a heavyweight tool when you're handling it. I mean, the body on this thing is solid brass with aluminum. It is a solid feeling mic. Inside there, it's all point-to-point -point hand wiring, a really minimal design that uses few components but uses really great components and use them really well. The capsule is uh, reminiscent of a K67 capsule that Neumann has been making uh, for ages, and it's been compared favorably to the sound of a Neumann U67. It's got a bit of that forward mid-range of the U87, but with maybe a slightly softer top end. 
really elegant sounding mic and we love the sound of this when we put it up and uh, hopefully you'll dig it too. B&H were some of the first guys to carry this one and now we're seeing them in more and more places. Price is comparable to the U87 but the tone may be a bit more unique, maybe a little bit more classic and vintage in a sense. And then the last one here is the only one in the lineup that you cannot buy in a store. This is the Sony C37. We thought we'd throw it in this lineup because it's something that studio owners around here in New York collect a little bit. Uh, it's been seen as a really nice cost-effective large diaphragm condenser studio workhorse that some people put into their libraries of microphones instead of the 414 or the U87 or in addition to them. So we thought it'd be fun to try this one too. It's a little bit brighter than most of the others, but also really cool sound. Well, enough of me talking about this stuff. Let's hear it. We're going to hear this on acoustic guitar, hear these on vocal, and you'll get to compare them for yourself. Pick out your favorite. Couple quick notes on listening here. We're going to be doing a different take for each microphone. In some cases, the differences could be subtle enough that you may hear even bigger difference between the takes than the mics. But I think that we've picked a wide enough range of microphones here that the difference between mics is going to be more significant. Make sure you're listening on HD and make sure you're listening on a good set of speakers to be certain you're going to hear the differences between these microphones. If you're doing that, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and maybe pick out a favorite of your own. Let's dive right in and hear these. Listen while your heart's still beating Feel the air your dreams are breathing If you're tired, lay your weary head down Seconds from a new day rising Sorries from sympathizing All that you want You don't need it, so let it go Sorry's from sympathizing all that you want. You don't need it, so let it go and leave it. Listen while your heart's still beating. Feel the air your dreams are breathing. If you're tired, Seconds from a new day rising Sorry's from sympathizing All that you want You don't need it So let it go And leave it Listen while your heart's still beating Feel the air your dreams are breathing If you're tired, lay your weary head down Seconds from a new day rising Sorry's from sympathizing All that you want You don't need it, so let it go And leave it Listen while your heart's still beating Feel the air your dreams are breathing If you're tired, lay your weary head down Seconds from a new day rising Sorry's from sympathizing All that you want, you don't
All right, now that we've heard these mics, let's hear what the engineers here at DeGraw Sound had to say about each model. We'll pick our favorites and you can pick yours too. All right, I'm looking forward to talking to Ben Rice and Gian Stone of DeGraw Sound, getting some of their impressions on these mics. Ben, Gian, out of these you know, nice studio workhorses, the 414, the U87, the Soyuz, all of that stuff, anything that stood out to you guys as a favorite? I liked the Soyuz a lot just initially picking it up. It was like really interesting looking at sure. the start. It, I mean, it weighs a ton, which I, I like in a microphone. It kind of makes it feel like more durable. Yeah. And we, we tried it on vocals. It sounded really awesome on vocals. It had like a really nice presence to it, nice top end. Um, and I always loved the Neumann U87. Like they're just great mics. We use them like all the time. You know? Sure. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys have a few of them, right? The older models? We have the uh, Neumann U87Is, which I believe they discontinued around like mid-70s or something. Mm -hmm. um, but this one today, it, I mean, it had, again, it had that Neumann U87 presence to it, sure. which was great. And what do you guys find yourself using the 87s on the most? Uh, Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I, th I mean, that's, that's probably the, one of the mics we use the most, whether it's drums, as drum overheads, toms, room mics, acoustic guitar. Sure. Vocals, cello, really good go. cello mic. Yeah, it's, it's super versatile. Did you have any favorites out of this batch? Was there anything that really stood out to you? I thought that the how do you pronounce this? The Soyuz. Soyuz yeah. I thought that one was pretty cool. I'd never heard that before. Yeah. It's, it did sound really good on vocals. It was nice. It sounded open, but it didn't have like that unnecessary like top end kind of thing right. that a lot of I think mics wind up doing when they go for that open thing. And I liked, what was it, the TLM 107? Yeah, yeah. That yeah, one, was cool. it, it sounded a little bit scooped, but mm -hmm. in kind of a pleasant way. Right. There was something very attractive about it. You know, right. I think initially when you kind of take a U87, which is a, a known legend sure. in the microphone world, and you have a mic that's, you know, I guess around half the price or something, you would think that, you know, it's probably not going to really hold up to what that legend, you know, can do. And it sounded great. Like, it was a really nice microphone right. for the price, you know? Yeah, you hear it right after the U87, and it's definitely in the same world of, you know, totally. sounding useful and usable. And I like what you said about the build quality in the Soyuz. If you hold that thing in your hand, it's this solid brass yeah. and aluminum. I mean, my goodness, this is, this is like a massive thing in your hand, and especially for the small size of it. It's totally. Surprising. But that is simultaneously one of my favorite things about the mic and one of my least favorite things, because I saw you trying to get that stand into position. You did have to take a little <laughs> extra care to really lock it down, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah really you, need, you need a legit stand to <laughs> yeah. support that. One thing that like jumped out at me was just like, you know, Wes's feedback after he like sang into each mic. And he kind of, well, I know that he has a 414 at home. That's what he's used to using. I think it's a different model 414. But both the 414 and the 87, he responded well to because they're a little bit brighter. Right. And I think that like right off the bat, like while he was tracking, that right. kind of gave him like a little bit more energy. But then like the Soyuz, I think he delivered his best vocal take on that one. Right. And it felt good for him. It seemed like when he was singing, but it didn't necessarily have just like quite as much of that like you know upper mid range and like top end that both the 87 and the 414 had. Right. And I agree, I think he gave his best performance on that Soyuz, and part of it is, is the mic inspiring you? Is it coaxing a great performance out of you? And, you know, some people will knock on the approach of doing separate takes to hear mics, but I think that you really get feedback from the microphone. It can change the performance, number one. Number two is that this is the way we really audition things in our studio, right? We're rarely putting, you know, five microphones right next to each other. Right. And then when you do, I think you said earlier, Ben, that the singer just likes the one that they're closest to. <laughs> right. In the end. Yeah. So it's hard to get a really good sense that way. Definitely. I remember uh, before he left, Wes did tell me he liked singing into the U87 and the Soyuz the most, that they were just giving him back something that felt really good. And then he was also really comfortable with the 14. XL2, the 414 XL2, because he yeah. said he owns one. Right. I'll be the 414 nerd here. I'm, I'm a big fan of them just because they have such an uncluttered mid-range. They're really kind of clean sounding. And they're almost like an inverse of an 87. I feel like if you have one of each, you can cover all your bases. Sure. Totally. But that said, if you can only have one, you're really not hurting either. You guys just have <laughs> U87s, and you're doing fine. I love the way your stuff sounds. Thank you, man. Thanks. Well, we use other stuff besides the 87s. I'm sure you do. <laughs> well, last quick question, those C37s. Why do you think about the tone of that compared to all of these, and what do you use those on? 
We use them a lot for overheads, um, for drum overheads. Um, we've used them on acoustic guitar a few times, uh, horns, um, room mics. Room mics. Yeah, they're they're pretty flat sounding um, in a really in a really nice musical way. Yeah, I mean, I love those mics. They're they're really great. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of interesting putting that up as like I know that was not the original plan, but putting that mm -hmm. up as like a last minute thing to add to the bunch because. That is a mic that we like use like every single day, pretty much. They're always up on stands. Like, even like it's like room mics. Like I've been working on a record where we're doing a lot of acoustic guitar. Just have those like a little bit further back, and because they're relatively flat and and they have a good good warmth to them, sure. they're pretty versatile. But I don't know. Like in like the shootout, I was like, I don't know. I, w I wouldn't gravitate <laughs> towards that. Right, right. But it, it it kind of just goes to show you that like you have these like tools that you use every single day and like sound great in tracks. Yeah. And then like you put it like on its own and it's a completely different beast. We we're talking about this like off camera, but sometimes like those mics were just like on their own. They sound incredible. You put them into the mix and it's like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit too much of this thing or, or a microphone that in like on its own doesn't really stand up and have that like full like range. It, you know, you put it in the mix and all of a sudden it's like it's perfect for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think also off camera we were kind of talking about just like, you know, if you were going to buy one microphone and, and just a lot of these people with home setups, I mean, we both kind of started out with home setups and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you think about like, well, is there one mic that could kind of do everything? And there's really, I mean, yes and no, there's, as Ben was just saying, there's certain mics that sound really good, you know, on specific instruments and certain mics that don't really work as well and, you know, one of the mics that we gravitate towards, as we said before, is the U87, and that's, like, one that really is versatile. Like, sure. if we were going to, like, that, when we opened the studio, it was, like, that was, like, our mic. That was, like, the mic that we wanted to, like, kind of show off, yeah. you know? And we pick it up, you know, 70% <laughs> of the time. Like, yeah. it's, it's just right. a great microphone. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I remember getting really pumped when we got a second U87. <laughs> and like, all right, Starting finally we've go. got, like, <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, then, I mean, then you, like, really have the ability to, like, pretty much like record any source like once yeah. you got like a stereo pair of great mics so yeah. true story thanks so much for the feedback guys let's uh hear a few more and then we'll come back and talk some more sounds, sounds good. good thanks yeah. justin thanks again for hanging out with us this has been justin of sonic scoop at degraw sound brought to you by our sponsors over at b and h this time and many thanks one more time to singer songwriter guitarist and performer wes hutchinson He's got a new record out last year. I definitely recommend you check it out. We'll provide links to his work for you as well. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and be sure to check out the next two segments in this series where we look at even more affordable large diaphragm condenser mics and some true studio workhorse dynamic microphones. See you then. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.